Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create an app or file that will read a CSV file and then create a bar graph or similar graph type, but without knowing any code, stay tuned. I'm going to walk through how to do that in today's video. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so we are opening up Visual Studio Code, but the reason we don't need to know code is we will be using ChatGPT and we'll be asking the questions from the perspective of someone who doesn't know coding. So all you will need for this video is Visual Studio Code or another IDE and then to install Python. So we have a sample CSV file, just so you see what it looks like. I've called it book1.csv, and I've saved it on the desktop. So now we're going to go over to ChatGPT, and we're going to specify all of our requirements. So we are going to say, write a Python app that does all of the following. And then shift enter. So first, we need it to install all of the required libraries and tools. And then two allows, let's see, asks the user for the file path to a CSV file, creates a bar graph of the data from the file as uh, as an image. So we're going to click enter and see what it comes up with first. So you'll see <clears throat> in this case right here, it's showing that it's installing the libraries and tools. So what we're going to do, we have everything set up here. So we're going to click copy code. Now we'll go into Visual Studio. We'll put or we'll go to new file. We'll call this hey. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. So we'll just call it hey.py. Now we will paste in all the code. We're not going to look at it at all. We just want to see if anything happens when it runs. So first up, we get this syntax error. So <clears throat> what we can do is we can say syntax error invalid syntax. So I get the error syntax error invalid syntax. And in this case, we can just specify it's at the install pandas at install pandas. And you'll see that it found the mistake. So now we're going to see if it can basically redo everything. And you'll see it's been updated. So now we're going to go back to Visual Studio paste in the new, we'll just call it stuff, and click run. So you'll see we are installing the libraries, and now it says enter the file path to the CSV file. Now a quick shortcut for this is you can go to File, Save As, Browse, and then when we go to, we see that it's on the desktop, we can click up here and click Control X or Control C and go back to Visual Studio Code. And if you click right here, you can right click and it'll paste it. And now we just need to do forward slash book one dot CSV because we need to specify not only the file, but where it is. And we'll click save or enter. And you'll see here now we're getting a little bit closer, but we have a couple of different errors. So you'll see basically there's quite a bit of information, but you'll see we get an error line 29 and then you'll see it says DF. <clears throat> and so we're looking for any kind of usable error. So you'll see it says key error X. So we can go to this, see if there's anything in here which we don't have anything. And the easiest way is again, from the perspective of not knowing code, we're gonna just type in, I get key error X. So we'll say when I run this in Visual Studio Code, I get key error X. And then you'll see now we're getting a little bit closer because it's saying X and Y do not match the column names in your CSV. And this prompts you to specify the correct column names for the X and Y, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we're going to copy this code and we will paste in 
what could potentially be the final draft and allow it to run. And while it's doing that, we're going to get the path again to our CSV file. And we have to know rows values. So we are going to click here, type in book1.csv, and then x values. So this is going to be the x, x axis. So that's going to be, we'll just try values out and see what happens. And then y is going to be called rows. And then you'll see we get this little bar graph here. So obviously we are much closer, but you'll notice that as we are kind of configuring things, so you'll see you have different options to kind of change things related to the graph if you want. But in this case, we're not seeing any of the actual data. So you'll see the Y axis and then the X axis. No you know, usable information. So we can now work with the data a little bit since we know, okay, we have our rows here and then our values and the values go obviously pretty high. But in this case, what if we wanted to have content such as instead of having numbers, so we'll try to reverse them first, and then see what happens next. So we're going to allow it to run through one more time. And then we will grab this file path. And then we will paste it in. And then once more, book1.csv. And then in this time, we're going to reverse everything. So we are going to make it rows and then values. And you'll see now we have a little bit of a change. So we have this spike right here over 200,000. And then obviously the rest of the values are substantially smaller. So that is actually an issue with the data itself. So what we can do here is let's try typing in 45 and save it and see what happens this time. So we are going to run it one more time and this time we should see everything exactly the way that we want it so we will close out this image and then we are going to get that file path one last time and again you can set this up however you see fit playing around with x and y axis and values but uh what we're going to do is we will paste in book1.csv so x values Again, we're going to put rows and values. And now we have some usable data. So what we have is you'll see we have the y axis. And so the number going just over 400 corresponds to the value here. So values are essentially the y axis label here. And you'll see that is correct here as well. And then on the x axis, we have rows. So you could change these values to make them whatever you want. So obviously you would probably wouldn't want the X axis and Y axis to both be numbers. You would want them to have some kind of labels. So we could just make this one, two, three, four, five or names or whatever the case is, but we can save the figure as our desktop save. And then we'll minimize this, go to our desktop and see what it looks like. So we have figure one and you'll see we have it saved as an actual PNG image that we can zoom in and zoom out of, but you also have the ability to adjust and configure settings here as well. So we'll move this over just to show you how you can kind of play around with it just a bit. So you have quite a few different options that you can work with. And obviously this is using a very, very simple data set, but you can use this to make different types of graphs and more complex information uh, or with more complex information. But that's at least the very basics to get you started. So we can save this file. And then again, you can find out different ways to actually get this data in like copying and pasting, but that covers the basics. So I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I will see you all in the next video.